there's a there's a moment in almost any post-apocalyptic horror film where the hero has been around as society has been collapsing you know perhaps they're sitting at home having their tea when the power goes out they know things are getting bad because the infrastructure is is failing and and that moment you know is is a shock to us but it's a moment that occurs invariably later in the episode or the movie where something that they always take for granted that they just reach over to flip on or to 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 use isn't there for them and that's the moment in their face you can see it <clears throat> that this is the point where you realize that the privileged life that you have always led in a world with modern conveniences and utilities is is truly collapsing around you and that life may never be the same again and it's that look it's the quality of the actor that look to drive it home to the audience we have um we're having problems with the circuit in our bedroom and so rather than try to diagnose it in the dark last night i turned the circuit off and uh when it gets a little lighter and a little later today i'll try to uh see if i can figure out what the problem is but basically our bedroom was off no charging our uh phones no charging our watches no charging our ipads no uh, being able to see what you're doing when you take a leak in the middle of the night none of that right just it was it was black and dark but <clears throat> it's it's a look that will never capture because i'm not an actor but i can assure you it would have driven it would have driven this home for you the moment this morning when I sat down on our Japanese toilet seat, which was not heated. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm quite positive. <laughs> I'm quite positive that there was the look on my face in those post-apocalyptic movies where, where the <laughs> protagonist realizes that we are, we are up shit creek. <laughs> at that exact moment because that is a unpleasant unbelievably unbelievably unpleasant and jarring moment when that toilet seat that you have for years and years and years relied upon to be so warm and inviting is is as cold as sitting on a freaking ice cube <laughs> it was it was, it was, oh, it was bad. um so uh, got to get on that today Definitely have to get on that today. We've come to Fry's Food Stores to try their new Scan and Go shopping system, in which you scan the items as you put them in the cart and then just pay as you're leaving. Second item, and it fails. Not auspicious. <laughs> okay, got the scanning thing worked out. Next problem, quantity. Quantity is a problem. Don't try to buy 10 of one item. Enter quantity. Excellent. 
so much easier. We do all the work, it takes us three times as long. <laughs> this is a system. Now what do we do? Hello everybody, we've just finished using the fries thing, so that woman doesn't just run out in front of me, out of a blind corner, and uh, it's the new scan bag and go, which I suppose I should have realized that the bagging was integral to this whole process, um, which is fries food stores new system by which you go in take a scanner with you, scan the food as you put it in your cart, and then when you go to the register at the end, it transfers the contents, and bingo, bango, bongo, you got your stuff. And um, everyone in Fry's has got their little shirt on, ask me how, which is like wearing the billboard for your ultimate replacement and unemployment. Um, I'll give my thoughts on it later. Chuan! Hi! What did you think of this process? And don't forget to speak up. Alright. I think it's... Well, I had fun. But it's a learning process. Sometimes the scanner works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and there are things like when you buy items that you have to wait it. You have to know how to do it or if you don't want the item how are you going to delete that from your list or maybe you look at it and you go no the price is not right i i don't want this one so i still don't know how to do that part but we figure out how to weigh the items um by following the instructions that's how we <laughs> i had to go watch the instructions they're only on the video yeah and then even when we asked the guy who worked there, ah, the show goes, ask me out. And he still got it wrong. Got it wrong. So I think they are learning too. I think they're not motivated to learn this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we still have two more chances to go in there and you get it like $5 off for your whole purchase if you buy $5 or more. I will give it a try and see if next time will go faster, but definitely I'm much at bagging the stuff in the bag than people who, who work in the store. Yeah, you're better at it, but at the same time it made our shopping three times as long because you kept bagging and re-bagging and then shuffling it around. And I only did it once. Yeah. I only did it yeah, once. Yeah, you did. Yes, I did. Once. One time. In the beginning. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's the future of shopping, right there. Probably, they need to work on their programming a little bit too, because the cash register then asks you to do things that you've already done, and when you do them, it confuses it. So, <clears throat> anyway, that was our exciting experience. Our exciting experience using the. Uh, scan bag and go they've put in a new street light in the last week over here and it uses well, I'm not sure what kind of bulb technology it's using but it it eerily lights up our front yard like full moonlight um, which doesn't bother me it's it's quite nice that you can see in the yard but it's it's still glaring every time you come out in the dark and the yard is just lit up um, it doesn't bother us it doesn't come to the light the windows or anything so uh, not a biggie uh, an improvement all around just just different last week I had probably the flu and I have a doctor's diagnosis of that, and it's going around. Um, 
my entire staff had been at it at one point. Um, I got it. I didn't seem to get it quite as bad as everybody else. I mean, I had a lot of muscle aches and... Look who we've got here being a pest. He's just showing up being a pest. I'm just, I'm just, I don't... His heart's beating all like, I'm terrified, what am I doing? Yeah, well, that's what you get. All right, back down you go. There you go. Anyway. Um, now he's over there pesting the other one going, I get picked up. I'm special. <laughs> and, um, damn it. Now here comes the other one. Yep. He's harder to ignore. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had the, <clears throat> I didn't have much fever, I had fever for one day, a little bit, but the rest of it was just the body aches and the head cold-like symptoms and the, <coughs> oh, the pains when I coughed, and just the aches and the muscles and everything was just terrible, but most of the other people had it with a high fever that I'm aware of. Um, this week it's, um, back to work and uh, you'll note that I'm not at work now but it's back to work it's a short week Martin Luther King Day was on Monday and uh, this is what they call pre-comp week at James and Chuan school pre-comp is a as far as I can tell sort of a BS jargonistic term for exams big exams and James took his first couple yesterday, and when he came home, he had a fever of 102.2, I think, at one point. And it's been a little higher since then. It So he's not in school today. I'm not at work today. I'm home looking after him. He's lying on the floor over there, covered up, and we have the heater on to keep the house warmer. And... Uh, Just, it doesn't, it doesn't end. Speaking of it doesn't end, this weekend I hit upon it. I don't know if you know this. This channel, TDM Unlimited, is never, never intended for monetization. Although it used to have monetization ads on it because I'm a YouTube partner. Uh, and all, at one point, if you were a YouTube partner, all your channels could be monetized. So I had it monetized, which is silly because, you know, five people at most ever watch this. Um, it's for posterity, not uh, profit. Or even for views, really. Uh, um, I'd, be, I'd be horrified if thousands of people were watching these. Um, but then, back in April, YouTube came along and said, oh, you have to have 10,000 views on a channel, or you that channel can't be monetized, and they demonetized this channel back then. And they just took away my ability to monetize it. Um, but I'm still, you know, I still get money off my main channel um, a little bit. It, it trickles in about 100 bucks a year, I guess, which is not much. Um, but I've noticed patterns, and you start to notice patterns, and you start to, to learn more about the monetization process, and you think, you know, if you did this right, you could... You can make it work. Now, the way to make it work is subscribers and regular views. We know that. That's that's the that thing. The money I get is from YouTube uh, for Google searches. So you can just look at my Lone Locust channel and see that the things that get hit are the things that people are searching for. So they're looking for a particular program or a particular product. Um, and so, therefore, all of my main ones are um, reviews. And... Uh, and recently that review I did of the AR kit game uh, Monster Park has really taken off. Um, hopelessly out of date now, but it's still pulling in a fair number of views and uh, it's, racking up, it's racking up money. But I, I look at that and I think, you know, this is not a thing that I want to do as a living because the people that do it as a living are nuts, but it's a thing as a hobby. I, I'd love to have a hobby that kind of pay back a little bit. And I've been thinking, you know, what, what can I do on YouTube? What can I do to set up a channel that can I can set up a regular viewership, that I can set up a, uh, an ongoing dialogue and 
And I had it. I had it. I hit it. It's an idea I had a long time ago. I used to have a, a blog, uh, The Pizza Locust. It doesn't exist anymore. And in fact, it, like, I haven't done a review on it since 2012, 2011, something like that. But I've kept the domain. And, um, you know, it's me going around town reviewing pizzas. It's very hard to do. It's also very um, temporal because, you know, they change a lot. And you have a review that's two or three years old. and But, <clears throat> but people would search for them and hit them. And I'd get some ad revenue out of that. And I thought, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up a, a pizza review channel. And I'm going to go out and my friend David and maybe Chuan and possibly some guest people and periodically go out and review a pizza place. Um, and, you know, I don't need to go into the whole detail of it, but, you know, I have a system behind how I'm going to pick which pizza places we go to and what it is that we're going to be looking at at the pizza places and how long the videos are going to be. And I've been working on the graphic branding and I've been working on the on, you know, getting the website ready and getting uh, an Instagram account going and the Twitter account back up and, and functioning and uh, Facebook page for it. And, you know, knowing, knowing that under these new YouTube rules that they put in place in April, that I would still have to get 10,000 views on those videos before I could ever make a cent. That's a hell of an ask. And I knew that, but you know, it's fun. I'm doing it for fun, but I'm also, you know, kind of looking at it saying, well, my goal here is that it eventually would start to possibly drag in a little bit of uh, income, even if just to offset the costs of hosting and, and whatnot for like the website. Then last night, Lloyd contacts me and says that his YouTube channel has been demonetized. And I thought, well, that's weird. It was in April that they started doing that. Uh, and it, uh, surprised it took so long. And, and he forwarded me the email. And YouTube has changed, um, has changed their um, formula. It's now no longer 10,000 uh, views on the channel. It's 1,000 subscribers. That's a lot of a subscribers for a new channel. I mean, to go from zero to a thousand is a big ask, especially, anyway, um, and then, and you also have to have 4,000 viewing hours, and, and, you know, just to give you an idea, everything they measure on YouTube is measured in minutes, right, so if you're looking at your YouTube stats, it might look impressive, but unless it's 240,000 minutes, you don't even have you don't even have that. So, uh, even my main channel only has about 35 hours in the last 12 months. So they're going to demonetize that. I haven't received the notice yet, but but um, it's all over the news last night after Lloyd sent that to me. Um, it's all to do with you know, like that moron that went into the suicide forest and started picking over dead corpses or whatever the hell he did. Um, advertisers are beginning to get antsy. They're beginning to realize that just letting Google throw up ads on any old video uh, might end up with their product being advertised in front of something horrific. And so, uh, as in typical fashion, Google has grossly overreacted and come up with stupid. So, now I'm looking at it and I'm saying, I'm looking at a channel that would be reviewing pizzas in the Phoenix area. Phoenix is, you know, a million or so people. Not all of them like pizza because the bell curve says half the population are stupid. And, uh, you know, and then, then a certain percentage of them don't have YouTube and a certain, or don't care about that or wouldn't look at that or wouldn't care about any. So, you know, a thousand subscribers for a Phoenix only channel that's a niche seems highly unlikely. Um, <clears throat> and then if you did, um, I was looking at doing one review a week uh, at approximately five minutes a video. That's, <clears throat> you know, 52 
videos a year. Um, and at five minutes each, you would, I think I worked it out, you're going to need something on the order of 925 views, full views, on each video during the course of the year to be able to hit the 4,000 hour requirement. So it's a tough ask, and I'm really discouraged because I just finished putting the pilot together. Um, I've made a couple couple versions of it and, and refining it, and I was feeling good about it. I was feeling good. You know, I liked it. It was, it was good. And now um, I have to ask myself, do I want to go ahead and continue with it because it's an idea I like and it's a thing I want to do, but recognizing that it's probably impossible for it to ever become a YouTube partner channel? And is that my goal? Um, or would it make more sense for me to rethink and come up with a new idea that might have wider appeal beyond Phoenix? And I don't know. I really don't know. But hit me like a hit me like a fist in the stomach last night when I found out about that. It's like I was I was, I was in it. I was jazzed. And I was like, yeah, I, I've spent some money um, on it. Not a whole whole lot, but some graphic stuff and um, you know setting up the domain to renew because I had just turned it off recently and it was going to expire in 15 days turn the pizza locust domain back on um yeah 